All right, today's little daily rehab is to show you the full progression of a closed chain scapular press. Now we're gonna go from all the way through two arm and then one arm. We're gonna use wall options and floor options and I'm gonna show you how to go from starting beginner right through to advanced. So if you're one of those people who is working on serratus anterior, trying to get their winging sorted, and you need a really good progression of exercises to either start from scratch or maybe you're halfway through, then follow this, this is gonna be for you. So the first one we're gonna go through is working on two arms. Now the reason why we do this is just to try and get the protraction, retraction movement going. So I always get people on the wall when you do this. Now, best thing to try and do is, you don't need a mirrored wall like this, this is great for you to see, but when you're doing it against the wall, it's unloaded really. So it's designed to get you, or a patient who is really Maybe they've got really bad winging, maybe their stress and tear is really weak, maybe this, the awareness is not so good, or maybe they're really stiff. Those sort of people need to start on a wall and always start with two arms so you get the movement right because one arm is so much harder. So two arms to start. When you do this, starting on a wall, have your hands a little bit wider than your shoulders, okay? When you're really tight, to do this against the wall is really hard. On the floor, it's directly under your shoulders, but when you're up against the wall, maybe a little bit wider. Now, some people find this really tight here, so if you're one of those people, you can just go on your fists, that is fine. Other than everyone else, go on your hands. Have your hands a little bit lower than your shoulders, and with your elbows, this is the big one, is trying to keep it straight. So when you go through a scapular press, you're trying to go into retraction with your shoulder blades. Now you notice my shoulder blades are going backwards, but my body's going forwards, okay? So as I go into retraction, that's the first part of the movement. Then you go into protraction, which is pushing your shoulders forward and pushing your body away from the wall. Now you'll find when you're against the wall, because your arms up like this, it's not too much movement, but there's just no load. So it's very kind on the shoulders. So if you're recovering from a shoulder injury, this is actually quite an easy way of getting things going. One arm is the way hard, and obviously on the floor is more load. So people with injuries usually start on a wall. So when you're doing this, just think, shoulders back, body towards the wall. When you push away though, don't go and round your back and lift your shoulders up. So you've got to try and not let your thoracic move into sort of kyphosis, if you like. That's why you know, with, with these we try and say, okay, lock all this up, keep your glutes on, keep your corn, try and keep everything stable and still. The only thing moving is your shoulder blades back and your shoulder blades forward. Now that's sort of just to get the movement right. Once you've got that going, what you can add on is a band load to that. You don't really need to add on a stability load to that because it's two arm, it's completely stable. So if you're going to advance that and maybe get a little bit of strength before you start going on one arm, because if you're a bit weak on one arm, maybe you need a bit more strength, is you can just put a little band on like this, okay, to that movement. So you go again, and remember, keep those elbows straight. So when you go to the wall, the band's sort of pulling you in, which may give you a little bit more retraction, and then when you push away, there's a resistance there. So you're gonna get more activation, more low level strengthening of your serratus anterior into protraction when you push forward, okay? So that one's a good little advance. If you're gonna go and try and get a little more strength before you go to one arm or the floor, put a band on, all right? So if you're gonna stay on the wall and you wanna to go to one arm before the floor, then all you're gonna simply do is go to that position again Maybe bring your hands in a little bit closer this time so they're sort of in line with your shoulders. Still keep them below your shoulder height and you simply take one hand away. Now what I do with that hand, either put it behind your back, put it on your front, it doesn't really matter. This is gonna get a bit harder because there's more load through that arm. But the good thing about going one arm is you're adding in a stability component. So when you go towards the wall, it's the same movement, but one shoulder's doing it. It's taking more load through the shoulder joint, it's taking more load through your serratus anterior but it's also your brain has to work out how to not collapse on that side. So you're gonna get some stability improvements through this, which is what you want for shoulder blades. So you're trying to learn, can I get scapular and shoulder joint stability when I go into retraction and protraction? The biggest thing is like when you look at your shoulders, when you go forward, don't rotate in, okay? So keep your body square with the wall. And when you push away, same things, don't round your back, don't lift your shoulder up, keep it down, 
When you push away, also don't rotate away through that shoulder joint. All right, so that's a really nice option. Now, if you want to go one step further on that, you can then put another band on this as well. Sometimes we put a ball against the wall, so you can go for a stability option first, which we definitely do when you're on the floor because there's always a load on the floor, so we're going to go stability option first. So if you want to be a little bit clever before you put the band on on this, is if you think, I went to one arm for stability, I'm going to make this even harder, so you then put that under your hand. Now that's just a simple Pilates ball. Keep it a little bit soft like that. Put that on the wall, okay? And then make sure you're leaning on that still. Be careful, you don't want to slip off this ball, so make sure that it's, you are confident with that. Same drill towards the wall and then push away. Now what this is doing is making the wall unstable. So it's harder for me to work into this movement and keep myself stable as well as trying to keep the load on. So this will give you a little bit more scapular and rotator cut, well, shoulder joint stability, and a little bit more strengthening as well for this without increasing the load. So one way of you making something more technical, more difficult, without increasing any more load through the joint. And this is quite good for people who say have an AC joint problem. They don't want any more load through that AC joint, but they want more stability and control around that joint. These are good options. Once you've done that, you've ticked that box, then you're gonna to go to the band, all right? So when you do the band, you hit it in two hands, this is gonna go into one hand. Now you can use a thera tubing like this, you can use a thera band, wrap it around, doesn't matter. Just make sure this band isn't too tight, okay? You've gotta be able to still stretch it out to the wall. Now what you notice is, it's on one arm, but also there's two bands, okay? So I've doubled the load of what I had before, and I'm on one arm. So there's now quite a lot of load on this shoulder. Because I've got, instead of two arms and one band each, it's one arm and two bands. So it's quite a decent amount. This one here, same drill. It's exactly the same process. You just got to make sure when the band goes on, the load goes on, you'll probably find your body wants to kick in a few more muscles. This is where some people start hitching their shoulder up and start using a few more things like upper traps. You just got to make sure, hey, keep that down. Make sure you get the full retraction and the full protraction without moving. Okay, make sure the band is not so heavy that you can't get it away. But also, when you come in, what you will tend to happen is you'll tend to want to start bending your arm. Your brain will want to start using other things like triceps to try and do the movement. So, important thing for you to remember is that band can't be so heavy that it changes what you're actually trying to do. Okay, keep it strict. Keep that shoulder, like that elbow straight, and so it is pure movement through that shoulder joint or through the scapula, okay? Now, how do I do that on the floor? Just pretend the floor is the wall, okay? The only thing that's different about this is you're gonna have gravity now. So already, even without bands and balls, already this is going to be harder by just having a bit more gravity load. The good thing about this though is pretty easy to do. Don't need too much equipment. You don't even need a wall, just a floor. With this exact same principles, but like I said, well, your hands are wider on the wall. Just bring them in a little bit closer now so you're directly over it. Now, two hands on the floor, the other thing you've got to think about is, what is my back doing? Okay, it was pretty easy to keep my back in a neutral position there. Now that I'm on my knees, people tend to sink their back into extension. So just make sure this back is in neutral, and you really have to make sure your core is on with this. When you drop down to ex into retraction, that's not so hard. Don't let your head hang. What I like to get people to do is maybe look up a little bit, so when they go into there, they're not going to hinge their head forward. Okay, they, they keep it in a semi-neutral position. When you push away, it's very tempting in this position to start doing a cat, okay? So don't fall in the trap of doing sort of cat cows, all right? You need to make sure that your thoracic spine is not bending or extending, okay? It's shoulder blade protraction, shoulder blade retraction, okay? Without head bobbing forward or thoracic going like that or lower back doing this, okay? so. This is harder, okay? Technically, it's a little bit harder. There is more gravity load. So we always do this sort of after, once they've got the technique of what your shoulder is supposed to be doing, because then you've got to start thinking about core, you've got to think about your head. It's looking a little bit more technical. So how do I make that harder with two hands? Band, right? So again, if you're trying to get, you know, if they go to one arm and it's a bit weak, okay, well, can I get a bit more strength in two arms before I go to one arm? So then put the band on, same drill, 
Very simple stuff. Same position. Work on where my position is in my core and work on retraction. And don't go fast with this. All these ones, nice and slow, so you can get the full movement, but also enough time under tension, which is going to help you with your strengthening. Okay? So make it harder. Always think stability over strength. So when I go to one arm, I want to take the same position, take one arm away, and again, go through that movement there. Now this is going to get hard. People will sort of will really start rolling through here. And when they push away, they want to roll away. I want you to stay square against the wall. Think about where your chest is, your ribs, that is in line with the floor. So when I drop down, look forward a little bit, keep your core in neutral position, shoulder blade retraction, shoulder blade protraction, okay? Making that harder, choose the ball over the band, all right? Now this gets a little bit tricky because you're now putting a lot of body weight on. People go, oh my goodness, this is going to get wobbly. Okay, so this is definitely a lot harder than the wall. If you're struggling here, go to the wall and learn on the wall first. But from this position, you'll find when you go down, you really start shaking because you have to control that ball quite a lot. Some people with wrist stiffness or old wrists start getting a little bit sore at this point. So sometimes this is not for them. They might have to do a stability option on the wall because the load here is just too much. And you'll notice that when you start doing this, the first thing your brain wants to do is bend your arm. Okay, so you'll be very strict with that tricep. Keep it locked straight. So when you go forward, or down I should say, you're trying to really work on keeping the elbow straight. You're also trying to, can, can you commit over that hand? Don't sort of sit back here and, and try and do it that way. It's not really doing too much. So not for everyone, but a good option if you can try it. Then more load, more strengthening, okay? So band on, again, exactly like we do with the wall. One hand, two bands, all right? Straight elbow. When you, make, when you do this too, when the load starts getting more, I want you to just go into a little bit of external rotation in the shoulder joint, okay? So you'll know when you're in external rotation is when your elbow, the inside of the elbow is sort of facing more forward than facing that way, all right? So commit to that position, core on, head forward a little bit, into retraction, into projection. Remember, when you push away, okay, don't push onto your feet. Just try and think, push directly, vertically up without rounding your back. So, there's my little progressions. I mean, that's all closed chain stuff. It's the sort of thing you should start with before you go to open chain work with your shoulder blade to work on more and more scapular sort of stability, more serrated strengthening to try and get that press movement correct and your winging correct. But that should help you along your journey and get that right. See you next time.